Yay, so now we're in lesson 16.3. This is your essential question. How can you describe transformations in the coordinate plane using algebraic representations and words, okay? So we are going to learn more about transformations in detail in module 17. Notice we're in module 16 right now. So we're just basically going to learn some basic things before we go into detail, okay? So basically, you need to know what a transformation means. So there you go. Uh-oh, that didn't come out right. So what's a transformation? It changes the position, shape, and or size of a figure, OK? So when you start off, that's a pre-image. Later on, it becomes an image. So let's say I have this triangle, and then I moved it here, OK? It's the same triangle. This is called the pre-image. And this is called the image after I moved it, okay? And what I did, I moved it. So that's called a translation, but that is basically a part of transformation. So within transformation, there are many things you can translate, which means move it. Or you could rotate. I think you know what rotate means. Or you can reflect. That means if you have like a triangle here and then you want to reflect across this line, now you're going to have a triangle that looks like that, right? Or um, it could be a stretch, S-T-R-A-T-C-H, or compression. What that means is you make it bigger. So this is the pre-image and now you have something like that. It, it got bigger, right? So that would be a stretch. A compression is when you have a big image and then you go smaller, okay? So that's what transformation means. You can translate, move it around or rotate it or reflect it, or you can make it bigger or smaller, okay? And the image you start off with is a pre-image, and once you're done, it becomes an image. So there you go. Let's listen to this part. You can use prime notation to name the image of a point. For example, the transformation T moves point A to point A prime. Point A is the pre-image. And you can use... I just wanted you to hear the part where it says A prime. You see the little thing over there? Okay. This, you read it A prime. Okay, so that's really important. I just, that's why I wanted you to play this. I don't know if you could hear it that well. But anyhow, you know, you can do this at home. All right, so there you go. And so just like I said, here's the pre-image. That's where you start off. And then once you move it, this is the image. And you mark it as A prime. And so I think that's pretty much it. And all the questions that you have to solve, it basically, um, you know, explains to you what a rigid and non-rigid transformation is, okay? So I want you to go ahead and work on this yourself, okay? Here's the pre-image at x, y, and then what is the rule? You're going to subtract 2 to the x and subtract 4 from the y. And so what you're going to do is you have a point at 0, 3, and then you're going to move it by subtracting 2 because that's the rule, and then you subtract 4 from 3, right? And so what are you going to get? over here. 0 minus 2 is negative 2 and 3 minus 4 is negative 1, right? And so that's it. And that's how you move the pre-image to the image. And so a prime is negative 2 comma negative 1. So you can go ahead and do all that stuff. And so basically when you see something like this though, what does it mean? You have to reflect it, okay? So what you're going to do is, for example, find this point, and then the x value stays the same at 1, but your y value is instead of 2, it's going to be negative 2. Same thing over here. And so if you were to finish drawing, you would have a triangle like that. And so that would be a reflection. And where did you reflect across? Across the x-axis, OK? These are things that I'm going to talk about in class anyway. But um, you have to first understand what a reflection is, what a translation is, okay? Um, and what a, this one is a stretch because what happens is you go from 
the x stays the same, but what did you do to the y? You multiply it by 2. So then what happens is your x value stays the same, but then the y value, instead of 2, you're going to put 4. Instead of negative 1, you're going to put, you know, negative 2. And uh, instead of 1, you're going to put, I mean, negative 1, you're going to put negative 2. And so you're going to draw a triangle that looks like this. So what have you just done? You basically stretched the triangle up and down, right? Okay, according to the y-axis, and so that's what you put, uh, what you will put here, right? See, look, the answer is right there. So this is a vertical stretch because you stretched up and down. All right. So then now, here's the next thing, very important thing that you have to understand. What is a rigid motion or isometry? It's a transformation that changes the position without changing the size or shape. So a rigid motion is pretty much, uh, oh, there you go, it's right here. Translation, reflections, and rotations. You know why? Because they move things around, but the shape would never change and the size would never change, okay? So that's a rigid motion. What's a rigid motion? Translation, reflections, and rotations, okay? And so we will solve all these problems. And what you have to do is you have to... Um, use math using the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem to figure out how long this is and make sure it, it measures the same. You know, measure all three sides, make sure they measure the same, okay? And then we're going to use a protractor to measure the angles and show how they uh, measure the same. And therefore, this is a rigid transformation. And we're going to do that in class, okay? Um, we'll do probably one question in class. Then we have a practice question right here that you can solve and um, I want you to go ahead and work on the homework question in the classroom if because um, it's going to be kind of difficult to do this by yourself okay now over here we're talking about what non-rigid motion so right before this we talked about rigid motions and that were that was what translations rotations and reflections right non-rigid motion means the shape changes okay so for example look what are we doing we're making the size uh, we're making x bigger by multiplying by 3 and y bigger by multiplying by 2, okay? So we plug in the numbers and we'll get a prime. And then when you draw it out, it's going to be big. Oh, you can see that I made a mistake there. Wait, I didn't do this one. Who did this? But anyway, I want you to go through all the steps down here. And please make sure you watch this, okay? This little triangle turned into this stretched version, and this is stretched which way? As you can see, this triangle has been stretched this way, so it has been stretched um, horizontally, okay? So again, the only way you're gonna get any help from Ms. Troy is if you actually go to the board. So if you already watched my video, and I know a lot of you are starting to watch my video, please go to the board so I could help you. And so this, um, any kind of stretch or compression is a non-rigid transformation because um, the shape changes, okay? So then here's another problem, and let me look at the questions. Um, this one I think you might be able to solve at home, but you know, again, for this section, if you can't solve any of your homework questions, this is not a problem. Just watch my video, take notes, and then go to the boards and start writing down the questions, okay? And then I'll come and help you. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for paying attention. You only had to know two things. That basically transformations, okay? Oh. Okay, let me write somewhere else. All you had to know was that transformation can be a rotation, it could be a reflection, it could be a translation, it could be a stretch, it could be a compression, okay? But then you just had to remember that these three right here, these are rigid transformations because it keeps the shape 
and the size. And these two are non-rigid transformation. And that's super easy, right? And pretty much that's it for today for you to really understand conceptually, but then you also have to know how to solve problems, okay? So this is the bell from the video, okay? Don't worry. All right, well, thank you and happy learning. Goodbye.